the topic of my lecture is inequality and its measurement. Inequality is a pretty broad term. I mean inequality of what? We can look at inequality from a from alternative perspectives. It can be inequality of income, health inequality, educational inequality, land inequality, many. There are many dimensions of well being in which we can analyze inequality. Now, today in this particular presentation, I am going to choose only one topic income inequality, because income is the is one major component of social well being. Now, human well being is I mean in many ways uh, is represented by income and hence we should be interested in the measurement of income inequality. Now, the purpose of this lecture is to analyze, examine some selected topics of distribution of incomes across populations. Now, income inequality when we talk about in income inequality, it can be you know for a particular population at a particular point of time, it can be for a particular population over time, it can be across two populations. So, it is a it, it involves cross population comparisons as well as comparison of a single population over time as, as well as at a cross section point. So, uh, we will analyze the concept of, so that is why I said that some selected aspects of distribution income across populations. So, we will analyze the concept of inequality of income and its different measures developed in the literature. The problem is that there are many ways of measuring income inequality. So, that is why I said different measures of different measures developed in the literature. Is it possible? We, we first look at some some selected measures. Now, is it possible that these selected measures become helpful in reaching at a particular specific conclusion? So, that we can unambiguously tell something that I do not need to calculate inequality uh, by a specific measure by or, or by any measure, we can conclude something. Okay. So, this is this is the this is one of the broad questions that we are going to address today. Now, many of you have been attending the inequality this lecture series since 2018. Have you ever asked why inequality and how specialists measure inequality? Now, an index of inequality is a scalar measure of interpersonal income differences within a given population. What do we mean by interpersonal income differences? Suppose your income is 4 her income is 2, my income is 1. Okay. There is, there are differences. Since yours is 4, mine is 1, the gap is 3. Yours is 4, her is 2, the gap is 2. Okay. Gap between you and me is 1. So, I get 3 <laughs> different picture, all possible combinations I can take. Then how to aggregate such gaps? This is the problem of inequality. But I can look at gap from different perspectives. I can look at differences, I can look at ratios. So, how to aggregate these gaps? This is the problem. This is the problem of inequality measurement, but it cannot be done in an arbitrary manner. There are thousands of ways that of doing this aggregations. This is known in the mathematics literature as aggregation. There are thousands of ways in which we can do aggregations. Okay. So, there must be some guiding principle that will tell us how to aggregate such differences. This is what an inequality measure does. I said, now what is high income inequality? Suppose as I said, mine is 1, her is 2, yours is 4. Most of the income is concentrated, you know, in your head. So, this economy, this 3 percent economy is characterized with a high income inequality. Okay. So, that is why I said high income inequality means concentration of high income in the hands of few. 
few people. Economic growth may be affected by the inability of many to invest in education and their lower, lower health, among other factors. Like you know, <laughs> mine is one, her is two, yours is four. We cannot invest much in education. You can invest, but we cannot invest. So, <laughs> we cannot, as well as health, private health service is very consuming, very consuming, okay, very expensive. We cannot invest. Maybe this, you know, low income affect our health condition as well. So, this will, since we are unable to invest in education, we are unable to invest in health, this will not able to <coughs> contribute much or may not maybe at all to the growth of the economy. That is why I said that economic growth may be affected by the inability of many to invest in education and lower health levels among others. Large wealth gap can give rise to social conflicts, tensions, social conflict. When one group sees that another group has lot of income, whereas I am highly deprived. I have only small income, few less incomes. I feel deprived. So, this may give rise to social tensions. I know about this, you know, in underdeveloped countries, in several underdeveloped countries, this happens. And higher security costs for both business and governments. Okay. In terms of social outcome, inequality has impacts on several issues including health, education, incidence of crime and violence. This is you know I have, this is Angus Deaton, this book was published by I believe so, uh, Chicago University Press in 2001. So you know I have seen this in, I, I was born in uh, East Pakistan, now it is Mm, known as Bangladesh. Okay. There I have seen, you know, I used to see, live in the countryside. There I have seen only very few rich farmers. And they were very rich. Whereas, those who used to, who used to work in their fields, they were very poor. And they could not, they were unable to send their children to schools. And education, their health as well as very, they, they are suffering from malnutrition, I have seen this. And incidence of crime and violence that also used to exist there. Because of, because they are poverty striken. I do not know the current condition of that country, because a long time ago I migrated to India. But I believe this, this, is, this situation still exists in many underdeveloped countries. High income inequality is likely to compress the size of the middle class. What is mean by we mean by middle class? Middle class is the median income. Median income, if you have odd number of observations, middle most income is the median income. Like three observations, I said one, two, four, her is the median income. If it is even number of observations, you take the average of the middle two observations, that is median income. Now, middle class is a is a neighborhood around the median income. If median income, if the middle class is low, low, I mean if it is just concentrated at the median income, then high income inequality is compressed to size of the middle class. Because high income inequality means you know, richer people will have, richer people will have most of the income. So, uh, middle class will have the size of the middle class will be pretty low. Okay. A large and rich middle class contributes significantly to the well-being of a society in many ways, particularly in terms of high economic growth, better health status, higher education level, a sizable contribution to the country's tax revenue. Suppose the middle class is this, your economy is this, okay. the middle class is this. So, it is a large and significantly sized middle class. The middle class can contribute to the growth of the economy, to the tax revenue of the economy, 
So, consequently, there will be investments in public goods, public health, education, etc. So, therefore, the economy will be in a better condition, better infrastructure, more social cohesion. Social cohesion means, I mean, I want to reduce less social conflict, I want to see. resulting from fellow filling. Because you know, if I say that my income is around his, in the neighborhood of his income. So, I do not have any uh, feeling of deprivation about his income. So, this is what I mean that some kind of <coughs> identification, this I call social cohesion. Whereas, if I, if my income is quite far from your income, there will be a feeling of alienation. So, I quote from the great Greek philosopher Aristotle. Aristotle say, according to Aristotle, the best political economy is formed by citizens of the middle class and, and that those states are likely to be well administered in which middle class is large. So, Aristotle argued that if the society's middle class is pretty large, it will be well administered and uh, it will be from uh, I mean society's well being, viewpoint of society's well being, it is, it is quite nice as well. On the other hand, a society characterized with a small middle class and more persons away from the middle income group may lead to strained relationship between the subgroups on the two sides of the middle class which can generate unrest. Now, why? Look at this. Suppose, I plot the incomes of the individuals in the society on a horizontal axis. The middle class is very slow, very small. So, I have people in this, I have people in this. There are extreme, in the extreme positions, there are many individuals. Okay, there are extreme individuals here, many individuals here, many individuals here. Middle class is low. So, these, those who are here, those who are here have a feeling of deprivation about those who are there. Okay. So, there is a spread from the middle class, there is a spread away from the middle class. This may generate social tension. Middle class which generate unrest, social unrest. But here note one thing. In the context of, I will come to this issue later on, when I go to variations of in income inequality measurement. Here, I take the median as the norm, but in the context of measurement of inequality, I will take mean as the norm. I mean, the mean is the targeted point. I mean, <coughs> uh, whereas in the context of in when I talk about middle class, middle class, I take the median as the norm. Okay. So, an economy in which what I want to say is the following. This is an issue of polarization. An economy in which mean is around the median, that is quite nice from viewpoint of society's well being. But I give an example. For example, uh, you consider United States. In United States, you know, income distribution is negatively skewed. Consequently, mean is less than the median. Inequality indices are, so those who are <laughs> below the median, okay, most of the people, most of the people are below the median here. So, that is why you know mean is less than median, income distribution is negatively skewed. Some indices are employed to add, inequality indices are employed to address a wide range of issues in development studies. Some of the standard questions that arise in this context are, is income distribution in, a con in the country more equal now than it was 5 years ago? Okay. This is one question. From policy point of view, suppose you have suggested some, made some policy recommendation to your government. Okay. The government would like to evaluate that when it applies your policy, that income inequality 
five years ago was how much now after application of your policy how much is income inequality if income inequality is, has gone down your policy definitely was effective how to reduce income inequality so that's why it is it comes from a policy perspective is inequality in region a of the country is more or less than that in region b if inequality in region a in is higher than that in region b from a policy perspective it may be one objective is to reduce the income inequality in region a how much inequality is difference due to differences between racial education gender groups and how much is due to differences between each group what i want to mean is this suppose i i want to i, I break down total inequality into between group and within group components what is between group component and within group component within group component means i i partition the population into several subgroups say for example uh, i india has many states more than 23 states i uh, partition india into say these states then for each state i calculate inequality then i make a, a weighted average of uh, these state wise inequalities i call it within group inequality and then between each group uh, region between each state there will be one inequality so i i again average these inequality levels this is called between group, group inequality which one is more when i look at inequality breakdown which one is more whether in, within group inequality is more or between group inequality is more once i am able to identify break down this total inequality from as a policy maker i can make some recommendation there is one more notion that is called factor decomposability suppose i am able to break down each in income into several components wage income non wage income your pension income your when you invest in um, shares such incomes okay so how much inequality is due to particular source of income which source is generating more inequality that also we can investigate from policy perspective now since often we will compare i said that uh, i want to compare today's inequality with what it was 5 years ago in your country but the population size has changed like in india population population grows okay at a very high rate so how much was india's population 5 years ago and how much was india's population uh, right now how much is so and then co corresponding inequality income distribution levels and inequality levels i look at so that means population sizes will differ total incomes as well differ so that's why i said since we will compare inequality levels of distributions with different population sizes we will restrict our attention on the set of all possible income distributions so what is all possible income distributions means how much was uh, what was the income distribution in your country 5 years ago what is the current income distribution i mean what is it was 2 2 years ago or i mean all the i mean what should i say the domain this is called the domain the domain should con contain all possible income distributions population size may be variable total income may be variable i denote that by d okay i'll give numerical examples now you see i took two distributions 1 and 2 4 6 for instance we may need to compare the inequality of the distribution x equal to 1 3 first person's income is 1 second person's income is 3 and two with two individuals one with income one the second one with income three so there are two persons here two incomes okay with that of the distribution 2 4 6 so there are three incomes three individuals so 2 4 6 2 4 are the incomes so both this income profiles or income distributions are in the set e uh, are in the set d so i go back i said all possible income distributions we denote by d so that's why i said both this are in the set d both these distributions now if we consider indian states 
uh, in which population sizes are different, then D will contain all in the income distributions in the different states in India. There is no problem. I can incorporate all income distributions of all states. Now, we assume that the income distributions are non-decreasingly ordered. First, smallest income, last, then I go second, smallest, um, next higher, next higher, then last biggest income. So, we denote the mean of the distribution by 1, 3. So, for example, x is equal to 1, 3, this is non-decreasingly ordered. Okay. Lowest income, then for example, this is also non-decreasingly ordered, 2, 4, 6. Lowest income, then next higher, then the maximum income. So, this is non-decreasingly ordered and then I denote the mean income by lambda. So, for example, the mean of this distribution is 2, 3 plus 1 divided by 2. Now, I said by an inco in income inequality, I mean a real valued function. That is, I need to get a real number okay, when I aggregate the differences. For example, if I take i is i of 1, 3, then it will denote the inequality of the income distribution 1, 3. If I take i of 2, 4, 6, it will denote income inequality of the distribution 2, 4, 6. That is why I said that by an inequality index i, we mean a real valued function defined on D. That is for any distribution x in D, i x. That is why I said i of 1, 3, i of 2, 4, 6. So, it is what is a function? It is just an aggregator. It just aggregates. Aggregate the gaps, aggregate the ratios, whatever it is, whatever the way we decide to measure inequality. Now, not every function can be an inequality index. For example, a constant function would be used that since it would give the same number independently of the distribution. Let me go back. I of if I say that I of 1, 3 is 0 0.1, I of 2, 4, 6 is also 0.1, then it is a constant function. The value of the constant function is 0 0.1, but it does not tell us anything about what is actually the income differences here and what is what is the picture of the income differences here. That is why constant functions are ruled out. Constant function means it gives one specific value for all distributions. So, that is that is constant function. A constant function gives the same number independently of the distribution. The way social scientists proceed um, is by assuming that I satisfy some properties also known as axioms. What is an it is an intrinsic idea behind intrinsic postulate behind the notion of inequality. I mean what I want to say is this getting looking at the number looking at looking at the value of the inequality index you cannot get the idea that this is the number that are, these are the postulates that are satisfied. You have to look at the you have to impose the postulate on i. Okay. That is once you um, impose the postulates on i you are imposing some value judgment that gives you that particular number. So, it is intrinsic to the notion of inequality. A postulate is a property, a postulate or an axiom is a property okay, that is intrinsic to the notion of inequality. So, we generally use four axioms for a good measure of inequality. Uh, that allows us to compare inequality. So, for example, between Luxembourg and China, different population size. Okay. China has lot of people, whereas Luxembourg has much lower population. So, how to compare inequality? That should be possible. So, this is 
one thing that and then uh, sorry Luxembourg and China I said Luxembourg has uh, <laughs> very low population size whereas China has the highest population size in the world. But how do we compare? There must be some way. One postulate should be able to take care of this. Then Luxembourg and Mozambique. Here I said very different population size, very different total income. Total income of or say per capita income of in Luxembourg is much higher than that in Mozambique. How to calculate, how to compare, in, how to look at inequality, how to compare inequality levels between the, these two countries. So, there should be some value judgment, some postulate that should be able to help us to calculate the value of inequality index. So, principle of population, I start with this. I call it the population replication invariance principle. Now, one income distribution is 1, 3, second income distribution is 2, 4, 6. So, that means here there are two persons, here there are three persons. Okay. Population sizes are different. Now, suppose Six is a number which is divisible by both two and three. But how do I arrive at six? If I replicate this three times, I get six incomes. If I replicate this two times, I get six incomes. This is the way of arriving at the number six. Now you see. If I replicate this three times, okay, I mean replication means make <laughs> income by income replication, repetition. One is here, one appears three times, three appears three times. So how many? Three, 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 one, 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 six values, six numbers. Here, if I replicate two times, so two, two, 4, 4, 6, 6. So, 6. I arrive at the number population size 6 here, I arrive at the population size 6 here, but I cannot do this arbitrarily. How do I? Some there should be some, some regulating conditions. Hence, very, hence, I said the way social scientists proceed in the comp comparison of populations with different number of individuals is to assume that replicating the population does not alter inequality. But my point is that when I am replicating this, and I am replicating this. Inequality of this should be equal to the inequality of this. Inequality of this should be equal to inequality of this. So, that means comparison of inequality between this and this should be between this and this, same as between this and this. That is what is population replication principle. Okay. I am, I, as, when I am comparing inequality levels of these two, Huh? This means that under population replication principle, uh, it means that I am comparing inequality levels of these two distributions. Okay? But how is population, how does population replication principle hold? The inequality in the two cases below the same. Now, then I come here. Now, you see, the final distributions have a common population size 6 and we compare these two. Okay? No problem population size I have made equal. If the replicated populations are equally unequal um, respectively to their original counterparts, then we say that inequality index is population replication invariant. That means, I say that if inequality of this is same as inequality of this, inequality of this is same as inequality of this, I call it population replication invariant. In that case, comparison of inequality between this and this is same as uh, between this and this. That is replicating the population does not alter inequality. This is a formal statement. When I replicate x k times, I get y and I say that this is formal statement. If you wish, you can ignore it. Thus, comparison of inequality of two original distributions with different population sizes is same as that of 
uh, they are replicated forms with a common population size. Now, I give you a small example. Suppose, look at the mean of this distribution and mean of this distribution. This is the replicated two fold replication of this. Mean of this distribution is 2, 3 plus 1 divided by 2, and then 3 plus 3 plus 3, 9, 9 plus 3, 12, 12 divided by 4 is 3, uh, sorry, 12 divided by 6 is 2. So, mean of this is same as mean of this. Likewise, mean of this is same as mean of this. That means, mean income is population replication invariant. But if you take total aggregate, it is not population replication invariant. You see, total of this is 4, whereas total of this is uh, 3 plus 6, 9, 12. So, not all, like not all statistics, okay, not all quantifiers will signify their level of inequality. We have to be very specific. So, that means we have a large set of, I mean, evaluating criteria by population replication principle we are able to eliminate some. Now, still we have to go. The final, uh, I have already given this and we compare these two. If the replicated populations are equally unequal respectively to their original counterparts, we say that the inequality index is population replication invariant. Now, I have given this already. Now, scale invariance. What is scale invariance? Suppose, look at this. Let me go back to the two specific example I have taken. 3 plus 1 is 4, 2, 4, 6, 12. The sizes or totals of these two distributions are different. Do not you think it is unreasonable? It is not sensible to compare inequalities of two distributions whose totals are also different, but how to make the totals identical. The way social scientists proceed in this situation is to assume that inequality does not change if all incomes are multiplied or divided by the same number. This is a, this represents another value adjustment. It will depend on how you look at inequality. Okay. While population replication invariance rep represented one value adjustment, this another value adjustment. I can do it in a different way, but for the timing, let us stick to this point. Social changes multiply or divide all the incomes of one distribution to obtain a transformed distribution with the same total income of the other. Start from this and this, because I have replicated and then I got this. The, what is the mean on, of this distribution? Is 4 and mean of this distribution 2, 2 plus 4, uh, 4 by 2, I, I go back to the original one. Huh. Okay. So, 4 by 2. So, this is the number I get, specific number. Now, I multiply this. Okay. Uh, this distribution, each income in this distribution by number 2, I get this. Okay. That means, what I do is the following. I, I calculate the mean of this distribution, I calculate the mean of this distribution. Okay. The distribution which has higher mean okay, is in the numerator, the distribution which has lower mean is the denominator. I get a number and I multiply the distribution in which uh, the total income is less by that particular number and I get a, a number which is I get a distribution which has same total as uh, this distribution. You see, when I multiply by 2, I calculated means of these distributions 6 plus 4 plus 2 12, 12 divided by 3 is 4, 3 plus 1 um, 4 divided by uh, 2 is 2, then I 4 by 2, 4 by 2, then I get 2. I multiply each of the, of the incomes here by 2. I get 2, 2, 2, 6, 6, 6. Now, look at the totals of these two distributions. Note that I should not divide by uh, total. I should not divide by total. I should divide by mean. Uh, because the why I should not divide by the total? Because the numbers are population size is different. 
had the population size been the same, I could have divided by the total. Because I am doing it in a general framework, I am assuming that population sizes may be different. So, now I have this. Now, calculate the total of this distribution and total of this distribution. 6, 6, 12, 12 plus uh, 8, 20, 20 times 2, 24. Now, here uh, 6, 18, 24. The total is same. Now, the question is that when I am doing this, what is the social scientist will compare that these two distributions that have the same number of individuals and the same total income. But when I am calculating, when I am multiplying this incomes in this by this number, I am assuming that this distribution and this distribution have the same inequality. This is called scale invariance property. That is equiproportionate change in the incomes of a distribution does not change inequality. Loosely speaking, what I am saying is this when you are converting euros into cents, inequality does not change. Okay. This is what is scale invariance postulate. Now, what I can do with population replication principle, I have <coughs> with population replication principle, I, ha I can make population sizes same with uh, what is that? with scale invariance postulate, I can make total same. Now, you see, um, uh, when I have rep, um, multiplied by the number 2, I have made totals of this and this identical. So, comparison of inequality of this and this is same as comparison of inequality of this and this by scale invariance postulate. So, that now I have same. The last property of invariance with respect to the multiplication division is known as scale invariance. Finally, so I formally, I, you skip this formal statement. I explain. Thus, under scale invariance and population replication invariance postulate, the inequality comparisons of the distributions with different population sizes and different totals is equivalent to that of the transformed distributions, having the same total income and same population size. Uh, what, next postulate is symmetry. What actually symmetry is this? In the context of inequality measurement, suppose I say that <coughs> I should not distinguish, make distinction between individuals by any characteristic other than income. Say for example, you are taller than me, okay, I am shorter than you. That should not affect the measurement of inequality. Uh, your head is full of hair, whereas <laughs> I do not have this much hair. That should not be another characteristic for measuring inequality. Okay. <laughs> so, this is what is symmetry. If I assume such this type of property okay, that all irrelevant these all these characters or <laughs> your hair has, has, has different color than my hair. <laughs> okay. So, all such characteristics should be irrelevant that is what or you are very tall <laughs> or you, you can ride a bicycle which I cannot. So, such characteristics should be irrelevant. So, inequalities which demand that inequality should be insensitive to it is also it also means that that means when all characteristics are irrelevant you know we can reorder incomes unambiguously. We can start from the lowest income then next higher then next higher then we go to the highest income. So, that is inequality is same as inequality of this inequality of this. So, symmetry allows us to define inequality index directly on ordered distribution. See, this is ordered, but this is not ordered. Uh, this is not ordered, it is like this. Okay. So, inequality of this is same as inequality of this, same as inequality of this. Symmetry allows us to define inequality index directly on ordered income distributions, that is, on vectors where the smallest income is in the first position and largest in, in the last. Now, I come to a very crucial postulate. Now, look at this x a and x b. Look at this x a and x b. Total income is 20 for both the distributions, but in both the distributions incomes are unequally distributed, is not it? Unequally distributed, 
I mean, when incomes are not all equal, I say that income distribution is unequal. But the richest person enjoys a higher income in XA than XB. And the opposite is true for the third richest person. Here, the richest person has income 9, whereas here he has 8. Whereas here he has 6, the third richest person here he has a lower income 5. So, how do I get how do I get this distribution from this distribution? If I take away one unit of income from this man and give it to this man, then I get this. Okay. This is called a progressive transfer. What is a progressive transfer? A transfer of income from a person to anyone who has a lower income. To anyone it can be. So, and the opposite, in fact, XA is obtained from XB by a transfer of, uh, sorry, it should be XB. XB is obtained from uh, A. A. XA is obtained from XB. No, XB, it should be XB is obtained from XA by a transfer of one unit of income from the richest to the third richest. See here. 1, 9 minus 1, 8, 5 plus 1, 6. So, 8, 6. Opposite is true. If I go, if I transfer one unit of income from this person to this person, then I get x a from x b. That means, 6 minus 1, 5, 8 plus 1, 9. So, it is possible to go both way. There was a typo, sorry. The difference between the two distribution is one progressive transfer. Okay. In general, a progressive transfer of income that is a transfer of income from a person to anyone who has a lower income, so that the donor does not become poorer than the recipient should reduce inequality. That means, when you are transferring me some amount of income, after transfer, your income should not be less than my income. You still remain richer. Okay. I still remain poorer, but my position has gone up, your position has a bit gone down. So, this is what is progressive transfer. This was introduced by Arthur Pigu and then uh, in 1920 by the then uh, finance minister of Britain, Hugh Dalton. So, that is why this property is also called Pigu Dalton condition. Arthur Pigu introduced it in 1912. A, an Italian statistician probably. No? Arthur Pigo, British? I do not know about it. Huh? French. French. Ah, statistician. French. 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 Pigo was French. Sorry. <laughs> because I know about Dalton. Dalton was. So, this is. Uh, then, what I say is the following. If I assume those, those these three examples are. I give some example. This is what is Gini index. Okay. I take pairwise differences uh, and then coefficient of variation. You all know about this and then the Atkinson index. Now, different indices can rank different distributions in different ways. Let me take this example. Let me take this example. See, coefficient of variation rank and Gini rank this and this in the same way. Now, let me go to the formula again. Just I will not take much time within 5 minutes, 5, no, five to 6 minutes. Slowly because you are not following. Take your time. Okay. See, the Gini takes pairwise income differences and some sub divided by mean. And then coefficient of, I, I do not go to the other formula. Coefficient of variation, what it does it do? It takes difference from the mean income squares the differences and then divided by mean. Atkinson index, you know, it is some kind of power function divided by mean. It is geometric mean, um, then divided by mean. Then now you see these two distributions. Coefficient of variation and Gini regards this and this as equally unequal, but Atkinson does not. Atkinson index says that this is more unequal than this. What is the reason? The reason is the following. If I have 
clearly understood it. I take one unit of income from this man to the, and give it to this man. I get this. And then one unit of income from this man to this man. I get this. Now you see, one unit of income from this man to this man, one unit of income from this man to this man. That is a progressive transfer and a regressive transfer. I mean the opposite transfer. Now what happens is this. Gini and coefficient of variation treat them identically. That is the effect of a progressive transfer is cancelled by the effect of a regressive transfer. Whereas as Atkinson index, you know, weighs the effect of a regressive transfer more highly. Atkinson index thinks that okay, a regressive transfer should get higher weight than a corresponding progressive transfer of equal size. This is what is the quality of the Atkinson index. Whereas Gini and coefficient of variation disregard this. Now, so I, we got that different indices may rank different distributions in different ways. So, how to suppose I want to say that you have suggested some policy in then five years ago, your policy has been applied. Now, you want to check whether your policy has reduced inequality by all inequality indices. So, how to do that? I use a technique called Lorentz curve. The Lorentz curve plots cumulative shares of total income against cumulative population shares. Uh, 0 percent of the population enjoys 0 percent of total income, 100 percent of the population possesses entire income. So, the curve, now I go back straight go to the curve. This is the Lorentz curve. Cumulative share of people from lowest to highest line of equality. That means, here this is the graph of the distribution when all incomes are equal. This is the actual curve that cumulative index of cumulative share of total income earned. Now, you see when except one all individuals have zero income this will be the shape of the curve. When all incomes are equal this will be the shape of the curve. This will be the shape of the curve when all incomes are equal. This will be the shape of the curve when only one person has all the incomes, but all other persons have zero income. So, this is the line of maximum inequality, this is the line of equality, this is the curve of maximum inequality. But what is this? This is called Lorentz curve, actual distribution when I am plotting uh, cumulative share of income against cumulative uh, against cumulative uh, um, sorry ag cumulative um, people from share of people from lowest to highest income against this. Now, one attractive feature of the Gini is that Gini means two times this area. That means, I, if I divide the area of this by the this area, I get the GD because this is 1 into 1 into half. Um, base into perpendicular into half in the numerator and then in the denominator area of this. So, this is two times this area, this is the GD. Okay. Now, I said that now, what is the additional usefulness of Gini, uh, Lorentz curve? Uh, allows us to rank distributions according to inequality and say that the country with lower Lorentz curve closer to the diagonal has less inequality than the country with the Lorentz curve further away. So, then I have a theorem here. Uh, if you, you can skip this theorem, I explain it graphically. Now, let us look at this graph. Look at this graph with dotted lines and look at this graph, look at this red ones, look at this uh, green ones. Now, you see, I say that the income distributions corresponding to this is less, has less inequality than the income distribution corresponding to this, also the income distribution corresponding to this. That means, if the Lorentz curve of one distribution lies inside the Lorentz curve of another distribution, the former has lower inequality than the latter. So, this distribution has lower inequality than this, this distribution has lower inequality than this. But if there is a cut between two distributions, I cannot say whether which distribution has low, lower or higher inequality. So, that is why 
I, when I looked at the distribution x c and x a, this, these two distributions, one can verify that the Lorentz curve of this and Lorentz curve of this intersect. That is why although Gini and coefficient of variation regard them as equally unequal, the Atkinson regards rank them differently. That is why there will be intersection between the Lorentz curve of the distributions. So, often such a picture arises, but still you can have pictures like this. So, that you can check whether inequality has gone up or inequality has gone down. I have given this example. Now, some examples of Lorentz domination, China, China, US, US. You see, uh, China this, then China um, this in 2014, 2000, 1980, then US this, uh, uh, 2014, um, then US this, 2000. Uh, 1980. In both the countries, over this period, over these 35 years, 1980 to 2014, inequalities have gone, gone up. But the percentage increase in inequality in China was much higher than that in US. They are non-intersecting curves. They are non-intersecting curves, so I can conclude unambiguously whether Chinese inequality has gone up, US inequality has gone up. And what I can say is the following percentage increase in Chinese inequality was much higher than that in US. Because if a curve is more away from the from this line of inequality, from this line of perfect equality, inequality is higher. Huh. Okay. And in fact, typical some typical pictures uh, for inequality levels, uh, like you know, I have for Brazil, uh, France, Sweden, and also um, Finland, Sweden and also examples of Gini indices. Now, I said just I one, one, one minute. So, I said that I have done it with scale invariance, but you can do it with absolute results. Because I give you one specific example. In 1960s, okay, there was a labor union strike in France. Those people demanded equal absolute increase in pay. They did not demand proportionate increase in p. And this motivated Professor Sartre's Christomy Combe to introduce absolute measures of inequality that are invariant under equal absolute translation of incomes. So, one can look at absolute inequality and one can look at polarization spread away from the median. So, it, it can be done in many ways. And one more thing which is currently in I mean a, a hot topic of research in the current period is multidimensional inequality measure. Why only in income? You take wealth, you take health, you take education, many more dimensions of life you can incorporate and calculate inequality. So, that is all I wanted to say. Thank you all.